The last two um, things that we're going to talk about are the way things can move into and out of cells um, are called endo and exocytosis. And they're basically just kind of the uh, one is the reverse of the other. So um, uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about is endocytosis. This is also sometimes known as cell gulping or engulfing. Um, so what is happening is um, the cell wants to get a mass of something. So if it was a large cell, like a unicellular organism, like a paramecium or something, and you, uh, you uh, might see some examples of this in the video for the lab. Um, but if um, you have a large cell, it can actually enfold uh, the membrane here and fold itself around it. And because these membranes, once they touch, can coalesce, that is, that membrane can become that one, and that membrane can come, become that, it basically makes a membrane-bound sac of whatever that substance is inside of the cell. All right, so it's basically just folded itself around it and engulfed it, and now it's created a vesicle that is filled, or a vacuole that is filled with um, material of some sort. Now there's different kinds of these. Um, you can have a liquid that is being enfolded, and this is called pinocytosis. Uh, that's this one, sorry. Um, or you can have a solid that is enfolded, which is more like kind of what I drew. This is called phagocytosis. Or you can have what they call receptor-mediated uh, endocytosis. And this is where there's receptors on the outside of the membrane that will kind of pick up whatever it, um, molecules it wants. And once it gets full, all the receptors get full in a certain area, it will just enfold in. Uh, this has a, like a specific look to it. You can see inside the cell, it has kind of a different look. But all of these are part of endocytosis. Um, this exocytosis is just the reverse. So this would be the cell is making something, or maybe it has a byproduct that it doesn't actually want, some kind of metabolite that it's not using, and it can take it to the edge of the cell, and again, because the membranes can coalesce with each other, it can just dump it out of the cell. So this is one of the ways, uh, for example, your stomach creates, uh, stomach cells will create enzymes um, that is uh, in lysosomes from the Golgi apparatus, so big sacks of protein or enzymes that will then be dumped into your stomach cavity to help digest your food. So that's just an example of exocytosis. Lastly, for this um, section, uh, there is this uh, that we want to talk about. This is uh, what we call cell signaling. Now, this is all in chapter 11. Um, uh, and in chapter 11, it gives you many, many examples of this. I don't want you to memorize all the examples or, or you know, read with a fine tooth comb uh, chapter 11, but I do want you to look it over and know this basic diagram, all right? So this is uh, called cell signaling. Uh, for example, this is the way a lot of cells um, will take on hormones as the signal molecule. So um, there will be a protein of some sort that is the receptor uh, protein uh, that is found in the cell membrane that will take on this signal molecule. Now that molecule will start a chain reaction of a pathway, a metabolic pathway that is called the signal transduction pathway. So this is many reactions that are happening that create finally a molecule that will cause a specific response in the cell. So say, for example, I'd have a hormone that is uh, um, trying to say, uh, they want you to do cell division or something like that. So I have a hormone that's going to um, set up the signal transduction pathway, and then that's going to create this, um, the start of a cell division process. Um, so this is called reception, the receiving of the signal. Transduction is the signal transduction pathway, and then the response. So um, when you look over chapter 11, just uh, look for that basic format, and you can see there's a whole bunch of different types of those. Um, here's your, your co-students. They're bored as well. <laughs>